Idaho de- oh, Death Row inmate Gerald Pizzuto, Center, attends his clemency hearing on November 30, 2021. Bruce Livingston, Left, one of Pizzuto's attorneys with the nonprofit Federal Defender Services of Idaho, sits at his left, with other members of his team also on hand. Screenshot. Editor's note. This Idaho Statesman story was produced in collaboration with the Idaho Capital Sun and benefited from public records grant funding through the Gumshoe Group Investigative Journalism Initiative. Last June, two days after a condemned man outlived his scheduled execution date, he made a macabre appeal to the agents tasked with guiding him to his end. Then he made it again. And again. The use of pentobarbital at my execution is too risky under the Eighth Amendment, Idaho death row inmate Gerald Pizzuto wrote to his prison warden on June 4, citing the prohibition of cruel and unusual punishment. My medication history, will make it very painful. The firing squad can be used and would be more humane. Gerald Pizzuto, 65, has been on death row for more than 35 years. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1986 for the murder of two people the summer before at a remote cabin in Idaho County, north of McCall. When his petition was rejected on the grounds that lethal injection is Idaho's only approved method of execution, Pete Sudo submitted his same request in July, and once more in August. According to documents obtained by the Idaho Statesman under the Idaho Public Records Act, the renewed push to execute Pete Sudo, who is terminally ill with cancer, has prompted further scrutiny of Idaho's history of secrecy around putting inmates to death by way of lethal injection. An investigation into the state's most recent executions reveals the lengths to which prison officials have gone to withhold documents from the public that disclose their past practices for acquiring the deadly drugs, the associated taxpayer costs and the identity of their suppliers. Idaho Department of Correction officials continue to decline to say whether they have the lethal injection drugs needed to execute Pizzuto, or name their source for the chemicals. The department spokesperson has said only that when the time comes, once a death warrant is issued, the state agency is confident it will have the drugs necessary to carry out the mandated execution. IDOC's latest refusal last week follows nearly a decade of department efforts to prevent public release of information about its execution procedures. A series of legal defeats in recent years finally forced the department to disclose records that showed the covert ways that prison leadership operated to conceal any information that could reveal their execution drug sources. Court proceedings and documents judges ordered released in a public records lawsuit show that in Idaho's last two executions, Paul Rhodes in 2011 and Richard Levitt in 2012, IDOC paid more than $20,000 in cash to acquire the drugs from out-of-state pharmacies in the days leading up to scheduled lethal injections. Experts on the death penalty, civil rights and pharmaceutical law have called such practices, directly involving IDOC Director Josh Twalt, ethically suspect and potentially risky to the inmate. Pizzuto's attorneys with the nonprofit Federal Defender Services of Idaho have gone a step further. They say that the past actions of IDOC officials to acquire lethal injection drugs, including bringing a suitcase full of cash to an alleged after hours parking lot exchange, border on illegal. IDOC's history of resorting to shady drug sources for its most recent executions makes it more likely that it will happen again, Jonah Horwitz, one of Pizzuto's attorneys, said in a written statement to the statesman. Using drugs of questionable quality or reliability would be dangerous under any circumstances, and would pose even more of a threat to Mr. Pizzuto because of his grave heart condition and complicated medication history. IDOC officials have repeatedly declined to answer questions from the statesmen about lethal injection drugs and suppliers, or the department's past acquisition practices. They cite IDOC's recently revised public records exemption rules, as well as active or anticipated legal challenges, including those filed by Pizzuto's attorneys in state and federal courts. The experts in their respective fields, meanwhile, say the state's track record with lethal injection gives them concern over whether IDOC will change course and operate differently with Pizzuto, as well as the other seven inmates on Idaho death row. Idaho's other death row inmates. Azad Abdullah received his death sentence in November 2004 for first-degree murder in the arson death of his wife in Ada County. Thomas Creech received his death sentence in January 1983 for the beating death of an Ada County inmate. Timothy Dunlap received his death sentence in April 1992 for first-degree murder in the killing of a woman during a bank robbery in Caribou County. James Hairston received his death sentence in November 1996 for one RSD-degree murder of two people he shot to death in Bannock County. Eric Hall received his death sentence in October 2004 for two counts of first-degree murder and rape of two women in Ada County in 2000 and 2003. Jonathan Daniel Renfro received his death sentence in November 2017 for first-degree murder in the shooting death of a police officer in Kootenay County. Robin Rowe received her death sentence in December 1993 for first-degree murder in the arson deaths of her husband, son and daughter in Ada County. The Department of Correction seems to have very little respect for the law, and certainly almost no respect for democracy and public transparency, Richie Epping, the American Civil Liberties Union of Idaho's legal director, said in an interview. 
so I have very little faith in the Department of Correction in carrying out this execution properly, and certainly carrying it out transparently in a way that actually brings justice and dignity to our state. The pseudo-lethal injection plan garners scrutiny. Questions persist about Idaho's efforts to block release of drug acquisition information as the U.S. continues to wrestle with the politically charged debate over capital punishment, now as a majority of states no longer permit executions. Last year, Virginia became the 23rd state to abolish the practice, in addition to the standing governor-imposed bans in California, Oregon, and Pennsylvania. Washington, D.C., also has in place a permanent prohibition on executions. Lethal injections in particular have garnered heightened focus in recent years after drug manufacturers halted sales to prisons, making the chemicals used to end inmates' lives much harder to obtain. The situation has left states like Idaho that still seek to execute prisoners choosing to employ unconventional means and sources to comply with the terms of these decades-old convictions, including Pizzuto's. Reports of botched executions in several states have also generated repeat national headlines, drawing the ire of anti-death penalty activists. For example, in a 2015 case in Oklahoma, an autopsy later confirmed that prison officials administered the wrong drug during an inmate's execution, with the man expressing as his final words, My body is on fire. Oklahoma, Utah, Mississippi and South Carolina are the only states in the U.S. where use of a firing squad is an approved backup method of execution. The option remained on the books in Idaho until 2009, and IDOC considered asking lawmakers to reinstate the firing squad as recently as 2014, but the concept didn't move forward. Increasingly under the microscope, capital punishment decision makers are paying greater attention, too. Last year, Oklahoma's parole board recommended several death row inmate sentences be reduced to life in prison until the state resolves its lethal injection process. The year prior, Ohio's governor placed executions on unofficial moratorium after a federal district court judge in Ohio ruled applying the state's lethal injection protocols to a death row inmate would almost certainly subject him to severe pain and needless suffering. Pizzuto's attorneys have made similar arguments in advocating against his execution. Pizzuto, 65, has been on death row for more than 35 years. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1986 for the murder of two people the summer before at a remote cabin in Idaho County, north of McCall. Pizzuto previously served nine years in prison for a rape conviction in Michigan and was also found guilty of two murders in Washington state after his Idaho conviction. This past May, Pizzuto's attorney successfully petitioned the Idaho Commission of Pardons and Parole to grant their client a clemency hearing, just the second for an Idaho death row inmate since the state reinstituted capital punishment in 1977. The unexpected move led to a stay of execution, Pizzuto's third time sidestepping being put to death since his conviction. That shelved his scheduled June 2nd lethal injection. Get the morning headlines delivered to your inbox. His attorneys argued that their client's appalling childhood and fading health, which includes late-stage bladder cancer, heart disease, diabetes and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, deserve the board's consideration of reducing his sentence to life in prison. He has been in hospice care for about two years, given Pizzuto's unique set of serious health issues. His attorneys have stated that the use of pentobarbital, a potent sedative that can stop a person's breathing in higher doses, violates Pizzuto's rights against cruel and unusual punishment, guaranteed under the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Drive. Jim Rubel is an attorney and longtime doctor of pharmacy who teaches law and ethics courses at the University of Utah's College of Pharmacy. He has frequently been an expert witness in death penalty cases, and he agrees that the use of compounded pentobarbital in the execution of inmates with complex medical histories invites uncertainty. An individual with a lot of compromised organ systems is not as predictable as what we might think, Rubel said by phone. How they react to it introduces a lot more variability. It could potentially be much less effective. Because of the complications of their overall health condition, it could also hasten their death, too. How and why we reported this story. Our government should not have anything to hide when it comes to the most serious thing that the government does, which is kill a human being, Richie Epping, the ACLU of Idaho's legal director, told me last May while I was working as a freelance writer for the Idaho Capital Sun. Epping was just off a legal victory over the Idaho Department of Correction while representing University of Idaho law professor Eliza Cover, who sought information about the death penalty under the state's Public Records Act. Idaho's highest court sided with them, and IDOC's refusal cost taxpayers more than $170,000. The documents that prison officials were finally forced to release reveal the history of intentionally opaque actions to prevent the public from knowing the costs and sources of the state's lethal injection drugs. Experts on the subject told me IDOC's records produced even more questions than answers, and I pitched this project to an investigative journalism outfit for freelance grant funding. By the time that the Gumshoe Group Journalism Initiative made its decision, I'd already accepted a position as an investigative reporter with the Idaho Statesman and could no longer accept the funds to seek even more public records. They scoffed, 
said the project was too important to skip, and lent their support anyway. This investigation is the result of a unique journalistic partnership in pursuit of those answers, once again wielding the state's requirement of public transparency from its government. The Statesman and Capital Sun teamed up to pull together materials released in the cover lawsuit, and our own subsequent records requests, to document how the state chooses to operate in the name of Idahoans, for what a spokesperson for Governor Brad Little called his most solemn of responsibilities, ending a human life. Kevin Fixler, Idaho Statesman investigative reporter. So little transparency on executions nationwide. The recent obstacles to obtaining the drugs needed to fulfill death sentences have driven states further into secrecy, said Robert Dunham, executive director of the Death Penalty Information Center. The Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit takes no formal stance on capital punishment, but it has been criticized by some death penalty proponents as supportive of anti-death penalty positions. This is part of a larger issue when it comes to executions in the United States. There is so little transparency, Dunham said by phone. But there should be transparency at each stage. If a policy can't be carried out in the light of day, then you have to question the policy. However, defenders of the policies in question argue that confidentiality is necessary to ensure the state can obtain the drugs needed to follow through on Idaho statute. Lethal injection is Idaho's only permissible means of capital punishment. This is a debate not limited to Idaho, Jeff Ray, IDOC spokesperson, said last year by email. Across the country and in Idaho, Capital punishment opponents have used protests and other means to discourage chemical suppliers from assisting states with carrying out executions. Capital punishment remains the law in Idaho. A group protest